Hello, my friends, and welcome back to yet another episode of Watching the Watchers Live. My name is Robert Govea. I am a criminal defense attorney at the r, &R Law Group. We're located in the always beautiful and sunny Scottsdale, Arizona. And today we're talking about some outrage that has been percolating over the last couple nights. This all emanating from Donald Trump. And Donald Trump, of course, had his Mar-a-Lago property raised, raided by the FBI. In a shocking turn of events, yesterday before the show started, we were sitting here getting ready to talk about inflation and all sorts of other things. And then we learned the FBI was there in Florida going through the former president's uh, property and his safe and all sorts of other things. So we've got a lot to unpack here. And as you can see, we've got a couple big segments that we're going to go through today. The first one that I want to start with is something interesting that I saw. This judge... Judge Reinhardt apparently is the judge who authorized the search warrant. And again, all this stuff is still under seal. So a lot of this is speculation. The New York Post is reporting on this, but we're going to go through and learn a little bit more about this guy because something very interesting has happened on the internet today. They actually have basically privated his bio on the judicial court's website and they are turning off, you know, they're sort of cleaning some of the search results apparently on Bing and on Google and they are just circling the wagons around this guy and around sort of the establishment. So we'll learn who Judge Reinhardt is. We'll take a look at search results. The Federalist had a, an interesting connection to him and some other people that we've talked about here on the show. We've got Access Denied, a security expert from CBS, weighed in on this. And I actually was able to pull up, I think, the search warrant that is currently restricted. It's still under seal. But I think I found the actual search warrant, the case number, and all of that. So... We'll go into that and poke around and see what the Federalist has to say for us. In our next segment, we'll then jump in and talk about KJP, Corrine Jean Pierre. She's out there trying to answer for this in the media. And several people from the media are saying, you know, this is pretty unprecedented. This is kind of a big deal. Did you or did the president, who is apparently Joe Biden, did you have any idea that this was happening? Yes or no? And she says, no. I mean, we really had... No heads up. We had no idea this was happening. Joe Biden, you know, how could you expect Joe Biden to know about this when he doesn't even know where he is in the mornings? So, right, sort of a believable excuse. But KJP also got asked about the bad optics. Were there, you know, any considerations given to what the Republicans might make of this? And then Peter Ducey, as usual, really got into it with KJP today. And you can see, look at this finger point. He's like, He's like, you listen here, Kareen. I want answers. And that's like serious business right there. So we're going to go through that, that as well. Peter Ducey was hot today, as he should be, as a lot of Americans are hot. So we'll go in that. Now, we also got to take a look at the Republicans' response, because some of these have been a little bit, well, different, right? We've seen a very big array of, of, of sort of responses here. We've got a whole smattering of them. You can see we're going to go through some of them. First, we'll start with Cocaine Mitch, who just really doesn't even want to talk about this. He's like, uh, I'm only here to talk about turtles. Leave me alone. And so we've got a very short reaction from him. You know, he's somebody who's really kind of been okay to watch Donald Trump fall. For many people, happiness is seeing your neighbor or your enemy fall off the roof. And so Mitch McConnell's like, well, he just fell off the roof. This is very good and useful. And he doesn't have much to say about it. But Kevin McCarthy posted a statement on Twitter. He said, look, enough's enough. We are going to be investigating this stuff hard as soon as we take over. Chuck Schumer also playing the silent treatment when he was over on there with Rachel Maddow. We've got Jim Jordan. He's also got, he pulled the finger out for, for his interview. He's, He's angry about it. And then we have uh, uh, Marsha Blackburn, Senator. We've got Carrie Lake, who's in the queue. Uh, shout out to Arizona. She's going to be here on the program. Uh, a clip. She's not going to be here on the program. And then we've got Lauren Boebert, who's also very outraged by this. So a lot of response, a lot of reaction that we will go through here today. And then finally, of course, we can't leave without hearing from the Trump family themselves. You know, this was their residence. This is Mar-a-Lago. And this is their father. This is their family. And, you know, we talked about this on our morning walk and talk for our members and our locals community. And actually, we posted that one publicly today, the public walk and talk. And, uh, you know, property, right? Property rights is very, very, very sacred, very important. 
and the Trump family just had a bunch of federal agents rummaging through all of their stuff, and that's offensive to everybody. So we're going to get reactions from the family. Eric Trump was also on the media, I think with Sean Hannity or somebody, outraged about all of this. See what the family says. And then Trump came out with a very interesting campaign little, um, I think it's commercial, but it's like three, four minutes. And so we'll all parse through that as we uh, unpack what happened here. And if you want to be a part of the program, my friends, the place to do that is over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Southson Academy is over there and says we are all outraged. All of us are outraged saying that she saw Eric this morning and wow, right? Yeah, he was pretty explosive. Savvy Sue's over there. Sousen says McConnell is a turtle and Jason on blast, JC, the music man and others. If you want to join up on YouTube, you also get access to those same walk and talks. And so I'd invite you to check that out over uh, on that. Click that join button right next to the subscribe button. You see that there. And of course, I am a lawyer. We have a law firm, the r and Law Group, located in Scottsdale, Arizona. We offer free case evaluations for anybody charged with a crime. You can come on in, meet with somebody on my team. I'll give them a copy of my book. It's called Beginning to Winning. We just want to help. And so we have a mission to help good people charged with crimes find safety, clarity, and hope, not only in their cases, but also in their lives. And so we appreciate your referrals over to our law firm. You do keep us busy and you really help us live our mission by enabling us to do the work that we are passionate about. So thank you for that. Now, and thank you to Beth Coddington with the super chat says, hi, sweetums and everyone. I'll bet if any conservatives gather around the judge's house to protest, they would immediately be arrested and locked up with no access to lawyers. That's a good point. It's a great point there, Beth, right? All of the abortionists or anti-abortionists were outside Judge Kavanaugh's house for all, uh, you know, they might still be there. I don't know. And no issues with that. No protests uh, were, were violating the law in those regards, even though it was political protests meant to impact a judge's opinion, right? To, to, to persuade a judge to reverse course. Those people are allowed to just parade around on their bongo drum. Oh, I'm at the abortion, woman's right to you, know, blah, 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 for, for months. But I guarantee you, if somebody showed up to old Judge Reinhardt's residence, there would be some pretty big uh, issues there. So thank you, Beth. Thank you to General Kale. We'll get to General's super chat here in a minute. But let's just get into the main story. Before we talk about any of this stuff, we have to ask ourselves, who is the Donald Trump judge who authorized the warrant to investigate his residence, to raid it, run out there with a bunch of boxes? This guy, allegedly, Judge Reinhardt, over in the Southern District of Florida. We're going to learn a little bit more about him. Now, this photograph came over from the Federalist, and this is apparently the gentleman. I tried to go and find the actual bio of this guy, but there's something very interesting that's happening right now. And so let me share that with you. You can see that somebody posted this. Her name is Marissa Hansen. She's over on Twitter. She said something very interesting is happening with this judge. You can see here, she says, Bing removes the search results for Judge Reiner. She searched for it on Bing, says, Bruce Reiner, Judge. Judge Reiner in Southern District of Florida, and some results have been removed, is what she's pointing out. Now, you might just say, well, that's just Bing. That's what Bing does. You know, they just sort of, they are a search engine. They are delivering you good search results. And so that means they have to filter out some of the bad results. And, you know, and it says here, some search results have been removed and so on and so forth. Now, you might be thinking, well, that's a little bit weird. You know, who, who knows what Twitter's doing, what Bing is doing on any of these, these things. But, you know, I'm typically able to go and find bios from judges, right? I can typically go to the court website and see what is in there. But when I tried to do that, when I tried to actually go to the court bio, to the court website, for example, here's what I find. You go over here, you click Judge Bruce Reinert. And you want to go to his website, but look, oh, access denied. You see this right here? Access is denied to the judge's bio page. This is at the florida.gov, right? So they actually just like privated his page. And if you look at this, or you really probably can't see it here, but the address bar, it says, it says specifically a .gov website. Let me show you what I mean about this here. So when we go back over to show notes and I click this link, which is the bios for all of the judges out of the Southern District of Florida, watch this. You're actually going to see, I can't even click on Judge Reinhardt's name. See this right here? Look. So here I can click on all of these other judges. All right, let me remove myself off the screen here. So if I go to the Southern District of Florida, United States District Court, 
I can see all of these people. I can see the bio for Judge uh, Edwin Torres. If I pull that up, here's the bio. Uh, here it is, James Lawrence, standing order, uh, his, his, all, his bi biography, right? It's all, it's all sort of here, his, his information is here. But if I go down here, I see blue link, blue link, blue link for all of these people, but I can't click Bruce Reinhardt. I can't click it. It's, he's the only judge on the screen that I can't click. All of these other people, I can see their bios, but they pulled the judge's bio off. They, they deleted it. <laughs> he's not, you can't see it in the, anywhere. So they pulled it off. And you go, well, that's a little bit weird. Why would they, you know, why would they do that? Now, I think I might know why. It's because what happened was the Federalists, actually, they were able to pull this before they deleted it. So the Federalist here, I actually uh, have a link to one of their articles. Here is what they are, were reporting. Now, I want to show you this. So the Federalist community joined them over at the Federalist and support their work. Of course, this was written by Jordan Boyd on August 9th. But here... It says the federal judge who signed off on the FBI's raid of President Donald Trump's home quit his job as an assistant U.S. attorney in South Florida in 2008 after he was hired by a convicted P-word and somebody named Jeffrey, y'all know who I'm talking about there, to represent his employees. In other words, Bruce Reinhardt is now a judge but had previously represented Jeffrey Epstein, hired by Epstein to represent his employees. Now, all of this came over from a new report from the New York Post and, you know, all of this background. So, so I want to I want to sort of share this with you. Focused, right? It says this article from The Federalist says before Reinhardt became a judge in 2018, he spent 10 years in private practice. And look, they're quoting this. They're, they're quoting this focused on white collar criminal defense and complex civil litigation. And if you click this link, this link, right, I'm clicking it, it takes you over to this page, the access denied page. So my point is the Federalist actually was able to pull data from this before they privated his bio page. Like they, they clicked it, they linked to it. And then after the fact, they said, uh oh, they know what judge authorized this search warrant. And then they privated his bio. So they don't want you to see something there, but the Federalist already got it and they've already linked it in the article. And so let's go ahead and read it, shall we? It says, it was during those years that Reinhardt represented Epstein's pilot scheduler, Sarah Kellen, who we talked about here. Why wasn't she called in the GM case? Why wasn't she called? We didn't hear her testify at all. And a woman named Nadia Marcinkova also had her there. Co-conspirator with GM, don't know. But who is often referred to as, as Ease Yugoslavian slave. And during that time, Reinhardt office in the same suite where Epstein's criminal defense lawyer, Jack Goldberger worked. So the courts don't want you to dig into his history. Don't want you to dig into his background so you could make those connections. They, so they privated it. They just said, oh, we're going to just, uh, yikes. It's like, you know, on Facebook, you just you know, unpublish your page or something like that. In 2011, just three years after he abandoned the U.S. and the attorney's office to work for Epstein's staff in the same year that multiple girls claimed that Epstein shopped them out for relationships with his friends, including his attorney, Alan Dershowitz and Prince Andrew Reinhardt was named in the Crime Victims Rights Act lawsuit, which suggested he disclosed private information he knew about the investigation into Epstein to his new employer. Now, despite the fact that as an assistant U.S. attorney, Reinhardt did oversee federal crimes. He denied any accusations. And that's the judge. All right. So he <laughs> and they pulled this information from his bio and now you can't see it. Now you can't go get any of it. Right. They privated it all, which makes me believe that there is definitely something there. Right. Access denied. You don't have any authorization to see what his bio says. Very, very curious, very convenient. And so Marissa and others are communicating that they're sort of seeing this thing, what feels like it's been removed it's, or he's, it's sort of being buried. It's being suppressed by the uh, by the tech companies. And it's not, you know, wouldn't surprise me a bit. So we, we get really very little information from him. But I was able to see that the search warrant looks like actually the the link to the case docket looks something like this. This is over from Court Listener, which is a, a free public website. And you can see 
that we've got United States versus the sealed search warrant. It is out of the Southern District of Florida. And it looks like it was assigned to Bruce Reinhardt, right? That's what you would expect. Now, a couple things just to point out here. It was filed yesterday uh, on Friday, right? Friday, August 5th, terminated August 5th. So it sort of was something that was filed. It is a search warrant issued on 8-5, entered on 8-5. And if you try to go and buy this document, if I try to go obtain it, it says you're not at, you know, you don't get access to this. So you can't see any of it, but same thing here, warrant application, warrant signed, sealed. And then on Monday they went and executed it. So I think this is the case where the search warrant originated. And so I have this marked down to follow and get alerts on it and all of that stuff. So we'll continue to do that, but that's about all we know officially from the document. The rest of it is uh, sort of still meandering out there. Donald Trump, of course, had his place raided. And we were asking ourselves yesterday and this morning during our walk and talk, is, is this like a normal thing? I thought this happened in third world countries where you have political opponents going after their uh, political enemies. But in America, we sort of didn't do that. You know, we didn't we don't like to do that. It's not ideal. And uh, Catherine Herridge, who I do appreciate her work, she was over on uh, she's over at CBS. And she said that she had an interview with this guy, some guy, right? His anal he's an analyst over there. His name is James Gagliano. Says that this is beyond special circumstances. For a former president, this is just earth shattering news. And he's absolutely stunned by what happened. Here he is on CBS. First of all, I think I, I shared just uh, the, the feeling of being absolutely stunned, like I think the rest of America is, yep. over this news tonight. And um, understanding that this is the personal residence of a, of a former president, I mean, the, the approvals that would have to take place at the upper echelons of the FBI, this would go all the way up to the director, Christopher Wray, as well as the Department of Justice, it would go all the way up to the Attorney General Merrick Garland. This is and that's what we were speculating about. How high does this go? And those are just some of the questions we have. Merrick Garland, Joe Biden, we're going to get into Corrine Jean-Pierre, and we've got very specific questions for her. This is certainly unprecedented and absolutely shocking. And you know, if they don't know about it, if Attorney General Merrick Garland and Joe Biden didn't know about it, that's a whole separate issue, right? That's a separate level of incompetence. This is beyond special circumstances. Special circumstances are, you know, subpoenas that are involving a, a politician or a clergy member or a member of law enforcement. Those are special circumstances. But for a former president, I mean, this is just, this is earth shattering news. Earth shattering. And I can tell you that uh, after the approvals were, were gotten from, from the Department of Justice and the FBI, this would have had to go before a magistrate, and we've, we've already heard, you know, folks on CBS talking about that, about how that process works to then dispatch a group of FBI agents to execute a search warrant. And the search warrant would be specific. It doesn't allow you to go in, kick in a door, and rifle through everything. It will have an itemized, listed, delineated um, set of circumstances for what the agents can search for. Yes, He's exactly right about that. Now, I want to give a special shout out to V and I think over to assess somebody over on Rumble who have shared over a, a web archive link of the actual judge's bio. And I was just reading that as we were listening to that clip. Here it is. In fact, you can see not not a whole lot here, but this is what they were trying to hide. This is over from the Wayback Machine, uh, the archive.web, uh, archive.org website. And here it is, right? So this is sort of a screenshot of what they captured. Now, I'm not encouraging anybody to go, you know, dox them or or or, uh, or anything like that. But here you can see there are a lot of a lot of a lot of information is here. Bruce Reinhardt was sworn in as a magistrate judge for the Southern District of Florida, March 14, 2018. Prior to taking the bench, he was in private practice for 10 years, solo practitioner, co-chair of the White Collar Criminal Practice Group as a, of a national firm. He focused on white collar crimes, defense, complex litigation, assistant U.S. attorney in West Palm Beach. 1988 to 96 trial attorney for the integrity section of the U.S. Department of Justice entered the department as part of the honors program, began legal career as a clerk for a U.S. District Court Honorable Shapiro. Reinhardt earned a degree in civil engineering from Princeton, and then he went to uh, Pennsylvania Law School. So some more information there and looks like he's got 
you know, some diff different attachments here and, uh, Sent, you know, rules for his cord and discovery procedures on how he likes things done. So all courtesy of the Wayback Machine. And that is, you know, that was a, that was apparently all public as of this morning. And then the court just sort of, you know, hit it for whatever reason. But, uh, you know, that's that's all publicly accessible information. And uh, thank you to V for sharing that over with us and to others who have, have linked that uh, our direction. But that's what we know about the gentleman. His name is Bruce Reinert, and apparently he is the judge who issued the search warrant against Donald Trump. And we'll continue to follow Mr. Reinert and other judges and everybody else who's involved in this. Thank you for continuing to support our work here. All right, and so we've got more to unpack. It's not just the judge. There's the White House that obviously needs to be looped into this. And Karine Jean-Pierre is the person who we go to to get our bearings straight. Now that Donald Trump's residence has been raided at Mar-a-Lago, a lot of people have a lot of questions, big ones for the White House and Joe Biden in particular. But since he can't answer many of them, we have to go to the White House spokesperson. Her name is Corrine Jean-Pierre, KJP. And she ordinarily doesn't have a lot of answers for us. And she's not really going to give many more today. But we are going to go through several bits from her and the media because several people were in the White House press briefing room very upset with her. They want to know what happened here. They want answers for this raid, for this invasion of the former president. It's unprecedented. Everybody's going, you realize what you've done? So they asked Corrine. The media started out this way with this gentleman. We've got several different clips. We've got three. And our final one is from Ducey himself who, as you can see, is just very, very upset, as he should be. He's outraged, just like the rest of us. So outraged, in fact, that he's got the deucey point. He's saying, you listen to me, Corrine. If you don't explain yourself, I'm going to point even harder. And look, he is outraged, and I don't mean to make light of it. I mean, this is a ridiculous thing that's happening. But let's start at the top. This gentleman is saying, did Joe Biden have a heads up? Did you have a heads up? Attorney General Merrick Garland, did you anybody have any idea this was happening? Because this is pretty big, kind of a big thing here. Kareen, help us out. Specifically, on a different topic, um, the FBI is uh, serving search warrant on the former president's residence in Florida. Uh, was the president or anyone at the White House aware of that search warrant? Or had, has anyone at the White House or the president been briefed in the aftermath of that search warrant being executed? All right, so I want to be very clear with these questions, okay? Because she's going to answer, like, he didn't know anything about this. No, he wasn't prepped about it. And they're, and, they're, and they're using time as a variable to not answer questions, okay? So we, we talk about this a lot, that somebody will ask a past question and the response will be a future answer. So, well, what did Joe Biden know about this? And then she'll come out, you know, that's a past looking question. And then she'll come out and she'll say, well, you know, well, Joe Biden believes in the, the rule of law. And so he's going to stick to that and he's going to let the Justice Department do their investigation. And you say, okay, well, that's a, that's about what's coming next. I didn't ask you about what's coming next. I said, what happened? Right? So they use time and proximity to sort of weasel out of questions. And you're going to hear a lot of that here. And, you know, we've got to be very, very, very dialed in on this timeliness thing because, it, it, yes, like part of the question is, did Joe Biden know about this right before it happened? Like that day? Did he know about it on Monday morning? Because she may say, the answer is, you know, the answer might be yes on Monday morning, but not specifically what time the raid started, right? And she'll say, no, he didn't know anything about it because he didn't know what time the raid started, but he knew in general that there was going to be a raid, right? And so he's going to ask very specific questions and Corrine is just going to waffle all over the place. She's going to use this time shift, a tactic to not answer anything. And he said specifically, did you know about this warrant? And was he briefed the president before all this took place? Now, with that foundation, let's turn it over to Corrine. No, the president was not briefed, did not, was not aware of it. No, no one at the White House was given uh, a heads up. No, that did not happen. Is the White House at all concerned? So I think she said that he wasn't briefed about it at all. Right. Like time, like not, not briefed at all, was not given a heads up, which makes the timeliness sort of come closer to it. So it's still pretty un un unclear answer. Let's see what else she's got. 
uh, given the domestic political climate, but also the signal that it sends to the rest of the world that the Department of Justice carried out this sort of operation on a former president, that it could even be, uh, create the, uh, the appearance of uh, politically uh, motivated prosecution. So first off, and you've heard us say this many times at this podium, you've heard the president say this, uh, the Justice Department conducts investigations independently, and we leave any law enforcement matters to them. Uh, okay, so this is the standard answer that they give for every investigation. Well, Hunter Biden's being investigated. We can't talk about that. Well, Hillary Clinton, we can't talk about that. On and on and on. Now, you know, conveniently, if it's an investigation about Trump, most of the time these leaks are flying all over the place. But here, right, she's going to tell us we can't talk about the decision that we made. We're the White House. We're the executive branch. The president runs the Department of Justice. He's the chief law enforcement officer of the country. And so he's the person responsible for these things. So when you do something entirely unprecedented in a country like this, you don't get to hide behind that stupid standard line. Well, we defer over to the Justice Department. You are the Justice Department. Your agency, your executive branch is the Justice Department. So you, you, you don't get to say that because this entire thing is covered in a conflict of interest. The president, Joe Biden, said, I'm running for office again. Corrine Jean-Pierre has taken the podium and said, he's running again, unequivocally. She's like, he does cartwheels at night. He's vibrant. We all go, okay, Corrine. But she comes out day after day and says it. So if that's all true, then he is prosecuting his political enemies, is he not? Right, Corrine? Literally the number one candidate for the Republicans thus far, according to basically every poll, is Donald Trump. So he's going directly after his enemies. It's unprecedented. You don't get to come out here and say, we just think that all of this is left best left to the independence of the DOJ. No, not on this one. You can do that for Hunter Biden. You can do that all over the place. You can do that for low level offenses and you can go out, you know, Steve Bannon, we don't comment on, okay, that's fine. But this is an unprecedented thing. So you don't get to use that same line. You are the DOJ. This is a conflict of interest through and through. But she's going to hide behind that same line. Let's listen. Uh, it would not be appropriate for us to comment on any ongoing investigations. I can say that President Biden has been unequivocal since the campaign. He believes in the rule of law, in the independence of, Justice Depar of the Justice Department investigations, that those investigations should be free from political influence. And he The whole stinking thing is political. So how can it be free? He has held that commitment as president. I want to also remind you all of what he said on January 7th of 2021, when he then nominated Merrick Garland to be the attorney general. And I quote, uh, we need to restore the honor, the integrity of the independence of the Department of Justice in this nation. Laughable, right? So he's basically in this one move has evaporated the entire credibility of the entire DOJ. I mean, if you're a U.S. attorney over there at the Department of Justice or an FBI agent, are you sitting here going, this is just great. I'm really happy to be a part of this institution. This is what I signed up for. That has been so badly damaged. And so many former leaders of that department in both parties have so testified and that and stated that I want to be clear to those who lead this. Department She's just reading you will serve. Joe Biden's words. Now. You won't work for me. You are not the president or the vice president's lawyer. All right, good job your reading. Your loyalty is not to me. It's to the law, the Make Constitution, your point. What's the your people point? of this What's your nation point? to guarantee justice, end quote. So I, I would refer you to the Department of Justice. I refer well, you to the Department of Justice, yeah, which is uh, the executive branch, okay? That, that's them. So it's not, right, that is you, Corrine. So you guys need to answer questions for your unprecedented actions. The DOJ doesn't get to just sit around and say, well, it's the open investigation and we're just going to answer questions uh, at our leisure. A lot of people have a lot of questions about this. And one reporter said, hey, Corrine, you know, the optics on this thing are pretty bad. Have you guys given that any thought? So, for example, you know, you're not going to talk about what Biden knew or what Merrick Garland knew. You're just going to refer everything over to them. They're not saying anything about it. Right. They hide behind this little wall. They go in front of Congress. They go in front of the Senate Judiciary Committee and the House. And they sit there and they say, we can't talk about any of these things. And they say, well, we're giving you billions of dollars. So we need to know if there is an ROI on that money. What are we investing in the FBI for if you're creating the terror threats that you're prosecuting? Maybe we don't need you. And they just sit there and they say, well, we can't, you know, we can't comment on ongoing investigations. So a reporter finally says, all right, well, have you thought about the Republicans taking advantage of this? 
and shoving this down your gullets at the next election because a lot of them are even outraged more than than some of the righties are. On this raid, I understand you're you're underscoring the the independence of the Justice Department, but just politically and in terms of the optics of this, are you concerned at all about how it looks for the Justice Department to be investigating and raiding the home of the former president who may very well be the current president's rival in, in 2024? Great question. I'd love, to, I'd love for her to answer this substantively. Let's see. And we're just not going to comment on, on any <laughs> ongoing investigations from here. We're just not going to comment on it. We're just not going to comment. Well, uh, y- y- you actually have to this time. Sorry. Yeah. Like a lot of the other, you know, we can't comment on ongoing investigations. A lot of those we just sort of tolerate. Not this time. Okay. You've got to explain yourselves on this. You went into a president. I want to see the memos. I want to see the, the case law that somebody researched and said executive privilege doesn't appro- apply. None of the privileges that would apply to an outgoing executive, a former president with his security clearances, with his ability to certainly you know, declassify things before he left and so on and so forth. What's the memo? What's the basis for it? You are bringing the allegations. You conducted the raid. You have to comment on it now. You don't just get to sit there and say, well, you know, I'm Standard protocol says that we shouldn't talk about this stuff ordinarily. Yeah, but you have the president, current president investigating his chief rival. That's a pretty big problem. You have the burden of proof to bring those claims to America and justify them, not the other way around. You don't get to sit in silence and just think that it all just gets answered. To Republicans who say it reeks of politics. Look, uh, I'll say this. She said to Republicans who say it reeks of politics. What do you say, Corrine? Um, you know, the president and the White House learned about this FBI search from public reports. We learned just like the American public did. So they had no idea this was happening. Is she lying to us or are they that incompetent? Meaning that the DOJ, Merrick Garland, the attorney general of the United States, somebody who's a part of the president's cabinet, who sits there and supposed to op- you know, give him updates, didn't inform them that they were raiding a former president. Like, I cannot believe that, right? Now, we talked about this this morning. Maybe there's a division there because they want to feign this semblance of propriety. They want to show you that there isn't, in fact, a conflict of interest because the White House didn't know anything about it. Oh, no, Joe Biden was just riding his bike around Delaware. and He got a text message from Kamala. Hey, Joe, guess what happened? No, I have a really hard time believing that. I mean, if that is the truth, isn't that negligence in and of itself? Right. Isn't that the government just saying, "I I guess the DOJ is just running itself? Merrick Garland doesn't know what they're doing. Lisa Monaco doesn't know what they're doing. And Joe Biden has no idea what they're doing. So they just don't know about it. They open up the New York Times and they figure it out like the rest of us. Uh, Yesterday, and we did not have advance notice uh, of this activity. Uh, So so we did not have advance notice of this activity. The raid, like like you didn't know that the FBI was going to do it at all or of the raid specifically, the timeliness of the raid that morning or in general. What's the what's the difference? Biden has been very clear from before he was elected president and throughout his time in office that the Justice Department conducts its investigations independently. He believes in the rule of law and what we are, are our nations of law, our nation of law. OK, so my question then is, uh, why wasn't Hillary Clinton raided? Remember, she had Clinton email dot com that had all sorts of confidential information. Many of it was actually marked top secret, which is the highest level that we've got. And Hillary has thousands of emails and she wiped them. And James Comey was palling around with Barack Obama and they revised the memo so as not to charge her. Okay, so she's going to sit here and lecture us. Joe Biden was the vice president at that time. We're a nation of laws. Well, guess what happened? Remember when James Comey was investigating Hillary Clinton over that email saga? And he said the statute in order for Hillary to be charged with a crime, if she was, you know, grossly negligent, right? If she met that standard, it's like if you're at a, if you get a DUI and you're above the legal limit, right? You're above a threshold. You got to meet that standard to be charged with the DUI. Hillary Clinton, if she met the gross negligence standard by conducting this, this private email server, which was hacked all over the place, which ended up on WikiLeaks, right? Is that grossly negligent when she knows better to not have top secret emails on private servers? Yeah, but she did it anyways because she didn't want to comply with the law. What happened? FBI, James Comey, and that entire entourage over there, they got together with Barack Obama. They sat down and James Comey revised his memo. He said it wasn't grossly negligent. No, 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 because that would lead to charges. It was, in fact, extremely careless, grossly negligent, extremely careless. Guess what? 
she doesn't cross the DUI threshold anymore. She's not over the criminal limit. They drop her back down under it and no charges are brought. Now, they still release the memo and she's very angry about it, you know, and she says that she lost the election as a result of it. But they could have charged her with a crime. They didn't. So why is that same standard not being applied here? Why didn't they raid Hillary Clinton's house? If KJP is going to come out and tell us that they all care about the law, well, why isn't it consistent? Joe Biden was in the White House both times. And he, again, we defer uh, any incoming on this particular uh, incident yesterday to the Department of Justice. Follow up on that, Green. The Republicans have said that they will probe this raid if they take over the House or the Senate after the November elections. What's the White House's reaction to that? Again, I'm, I'm just... She says, the question is, Republicans are going to come after you when they take over. What's your reaction? Just not going to comment no on um, any reaction to... Uh, to what happened yesterday, we are going to refer any incoming to the Department of Justice. Okay. But that's not really about DOJ. It's more about what might be coming your way. Yeah, it's not the DOJ. He says it's not about the DOJ. It's about the Republicans. They say they're coming after you. So you don't have to talk about Trump. What's your opinion on what the Republicans are promising to do to you, Corrine? If, if the election does not go your way. You know. uh, that's a hypothetical. And I'm just not going to oh. entertain it at this time. And another topic. Oh, gosh. So just the absolute worst. Now, my friends, it's deucey time. So I know this is why we're all here today. It's deucey time. <laughs> and we have to get into it. Look at this finger point. I know I sort of teased that at the start of the program, but now it's time. And he is very hot today, as he should be. And, you know, he asks, asks some really substantive questions. Here he is for about two and a half minutes. He starts with Kareen and it just gets pretty hot. We don't get much substantive from her, but it is enjoyable. Let's listen. Thanks, Green. Do you consider Donald Trump to be a political rival of President Biden? Easy question. I I'm not going to speak to that from here. But you talk about Trump all the time. So do you consider him to be? I don't talk about Trump all the time. Yeah, yeah. Ultra MAGA, you guys were criticizing his handling of COVID last week. Yeah. You've mentioned his January 6th response a couple days and, ago. No. So can you say, based on all that, I I didn't say anything about Mar-a-Lago. I'm just asking you if you consider the president. I'm, to be I'm saying from here, I'm not going to comment on that. Does the president still want to uh, think that he would be very fortunate to run against Trump in 2024, like he has said before? Again, I'm not going to comment it's on. Just, it's just I'm a not. Quote from I'm, the president. In the next election, I'd be very fortunate if I had that same man running against me. Does he still? All think I can that? tell you, Peter, is that the president intends to run in 2024. Okay, so great. So she just doubled down on it. He's going to run and. and uh, He's investigating his political enemies. So do you have anything to say about that, Kay? Is there a concern here that if you guys don't say more, then these Republicans who are accusing this White House of weaponizing the Justice Department, weaponizing the FBI, are that's going to become the, the public sentiment. If you guys don't say once and for all, we are not doing that. First, first of all, we're just not going to comment on the Department of Justice investigation. Okay, we're just we're easier. just not it, going to comment or, on Is this White House weaponizing the Justice Department and the FBI against against political opponents? Can, she could say no right now. Okay, she could I I haven't listened to this. I don't know what she says what comes out of her mouth next, but she could say no, of course not. We're not weaponizing this. We are following justice wherever it leads. Let's see what she says. I have no idea what she says. The president has been very clear uh, from before he was elected, very clear on this. Hold on. It's Throughout just, his time in now. office. I, I heard the quote. We will be playing the quote tonight at 6 o'clock. Is this administration weaponizing the Justice Department and the Easy. FBI against political opponents? Easy. Peter, the president believes in the rule of law. Ah! The president believes in the independence of the D Department that's, of Justice. Yes or no. Just... No, is that is, House. no, it's a yes or a no for you. I'm answering the question. That I want to You may answer. not like it, but I'm answering the question. <laughs> and I'm, no, no, I'm answering right, the question and I'm telling you that we are not going to comment on a criminal investigation. The president has been very clear. I laid out what read his again. thoughts were back yeah, on January again. 7th in, tw in 2021 about how he saw the Department of Justice. And I'm just going to leave it there. We're not going to comment from here, from this White House, on a criminal investigation that is currently happening. Wow, amazing. So, okay, they're not going to comment on it, which means the Republicans, I guess, are going to have the open floor. The White House is not going to craft any of this narrative. And so everything that the Republicans say is, I guess, going to be left unaddressed. I mean, it's all 
true. When they're saying that Donald Trump is the subject of a political inquisition, a political prosecution by his enemies in the White House, I guess is just going to sit there and say, we have no comment on it. That's Corrine Jean-Pierre. Now, they're going to have to adjust this little strategy here because you don't get to take a move like this and then feign ignorance about what happened. No, I have no idea what happened there. Oh, weird. A warrant on Mar-a-Lago? No clue what happened there. And that's obviously not believable. Nobody in America is going to take that home with them. They're all going to say, you guys know what you were doing. So they're going to have to reverse course on this, I think, or not. Well, we'll see. That is Corrine and the White House responding to Donald Trump and Mar-a-Lago being invaded. We, of course, will continue to cover the White House, Joe Biden, and everything else they have to say about it. But now we have reaction from the Republicans. The Republicans also are out. And there's been a couple different responses. So let's close some of these up before we get over to the Republicans. And you can see we've got a whole smattering of people here. Republicans are now responding to Donald Trump and the FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago. We can see we've got several different clips from a bunch of different representatives, senators, and other individuals, even candidates who are running for office, reaction to the invasion, to the raid by the FBI. Now, as you can see, we've got kind of a nice, diverse group of people here. We've got some candidates. We've got some representatives. We've got some senators. We've got Jim Jordan here, McCarthy, even Chuck Schumer, who's not a Republican. He is a Democrat. He was on with Rachel Maddow. And so we'll get to all of them. Now, most Republicans were pretty outraged about this. Okay, we've seen a lot of, of anger. Kevin McCarthy, for example, is the House Minority Leader. And he posted this. He says, Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. He actually was very sort of aggressive pretty quickly after Donald Trump posted his statement. Donald Trump came out and on August 8th, Merrick Garland came out at 6.01 p.m. So he was pretty quick on this. You can see that right down here. And a lot of Republicans have taken, you know, 24 hours. They're sort of just uh, kind of meandering around. They're sitting down with their press team and they're trying to figure out what to do. But this is, this is a good time. You know, this is pretty timely. McCarthy came out right away. He says, I've seen enough. The Department of Justice has reached an intolerable state of weaponized politicization. When Republicans take back the House, we will conduct immediate oversight of this department. Follow the facts and we will leave no stone unturned. He says, Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. Right. And this is a pretty common thing. I don't think this is an official preservation letter. But we do send preservation letters, a common example at our office, the r, r Law Group located in Scottsdale, Arizona with free case evaluations. We will send letters of preservation to like, for example, a bar. If there's an incident at a bar and you know everybody is escorted out, you want to preserve the video surveillance footage. You send a letter, preserve it, don't delete it so that you can get access to it. And so he's saying that to the attorney general, uh, we're going to have the House Judiciary Committee, we're going to have the House Senate Committee, and we are going to be inquiring ourselves there, Mary, about what you had uh, done here. And so that's kind of one wing of the Republican Party. Now, we also have a different contingent. We've got the Mitch McConnell contingent, who is you know, sort of like uh, sometimes Mitch McConnell gets a hit of cocaine and he's just really animated and uh, aggressive. Other times he's kind of like this. He kind of just sounds like uh, he could really care less about anything. He was asked uh, about this, about the Trump Mar-a-Lago raid, and we've got a uh, 12 seconds of Mitch McConnell. It's not much going on here. What is your reaction to Sorry, the Sorry about those eardrums. Let's lower this volume here. I'm here today to talk about uh, the flood and the recovery from the flood. Sir, you were in Western Kentucky. In Anything else? Uh, Mitch. You're like the lead senator of the country for the Republicans. Can you answer anything about Trump? I'm here today to talk about uh, the flood and the recovery from the flood. Okay. Sir, you were in okay. So um, not, not too much out of Mitch McConnell. Uh, all right. He's kind of, I'm here to talk about the flood. Trump's on his own. I don't give a crap. I, plus, I think Trump's kind of a jerk is, you know, sort of how he feels. And it's that, it's that beautiful schadenfreude, you know, you know, it's the, Seeing your neighbor fall off his roof is kind of the happiest thing in the world for some people. They just sit there and they just wait for it all day. Their lives are so miserable. 
And McConnell's kind of one of these, you know, people like Lindsey Graham is probably another one. There's a lot of guys who will would be just be doing cartwheels if Trump never stepped into the political arena ever again. And that's Mitch McConnell and that contingent. You know, I think like Ducey is going to be a part of it. Mike Pence came out with like a just a, you know, like a, an obligatory statement. He's just like, ugh, I've got a lot of questions. And a lot of Republicans are in that uh, I want answers contingent. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting for the facts to come out. I'm waiting for the search warrant to come out. I can't wait to see what's in it. You know, we should reserve judgment. Uh, no, right. Let's, let's go ahead and, and demand judgment. Let's get answers right now because it is due. This wait and see crap, enough of that. We, they're going to do unprecedented actions. They've got to communicate with us to justify their behavior. They don't get the benefit of good faith anymore. We've already attempted that. And we've seen what they've done with the FBI. We see what they did with Michael Sussman. We see what they did with Carter Page. We've seen what they've done with the Nasser investigation and the Olympic girls and the list goes on and on. FBI is corrupt and incompetent. They still haven't found the pipe bomber from January 6th for crying out loud. So we've got these two contingents and we know McConnell's going to just sort of, you know, flop over like a turtle. McCarthy's going to institute an investigation. Now let's see what one of the Democrats has to say. This is Chuck Schumer, and he's on with Rachel Maddow, who I thought was like MIA or something. I, I think they had her on a milk carton somewhere. But apparently she's back in the studio and she's got some plans, you know, for something or other. But they asked this guy, Chuck Schumer, who usually loves to rant and rage about Donald Trump, right? This guy's out here. He's saying, you know, there's a whirlwind for you, Kavanaugh. And he absolutely hates Donald Trump, right? Every moment he gets to smear him, he takes it. But he didn't do it last night. Very interesting. He's on with Rachel Maddow and she says, hey, uh, here's your opportunity, Chuck. You can get out here and talk about what a monster Donald Trump is. The floor is yours and watch what he does. It's news from South Florida tonight that the FBI has has searched the home of the former president. Yeah, well, I know nothing about it other than what I've read, like everybody else. So I think it's wise for me to withhold comment until we learn more. What? I appreciate that. Uh, it's wise for you to withhold comment. Uh, and let's look at Ra look at Rachel. She's like, what? Hold comment until we learn more. I appreciate that. I do have to tell you that one of your um, not colleagues, but another congressional leader, the uh, House Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy. We just read his statement. Just made a statement online. He said he's going to um, come for you about the FBI search for executing the search warrant at the former president's home. Um, he said when Republicans take back the House, they will conduct immediate oversight of this department. And then he says this, quote, Attorney General Garland, preserve your documents and clear your calendar. That's right, buddy boy. Threatening Attorney General Garland. Threatening Attorney General Garland is what, Mar is what Maddow said. That's a threat to him. Preserve your records. He's a member of government. Congress has proper legislative oversight over the executive branch. They have the power of the purse. They get to have their stupid committees and call people in there. What is she talking about threatening? Uh, in response to the FBI having executed this search warrant tonight. I know that you don't want to talk about the substance of the matter at no. Mar-a-Lago, but I do want to ask your reaction to what Mr. McCarthy has Look, said. Look, I think we don't, none of us know the facts and any comments are premature. Any comments are premature. And did you see Rachel? She's like, oh gosh, she's like this guy. What a lose. She's like, I have six more minutes to kill in this segment, Chuck, you know, and I'd love to get your opinion on it, but he doesn't have answers. Look, said. I think we don't, none of us know the facts and any comments are premature. Okay. Okay. Rachel, Matt. Okay. Well, thanks for nothing there, Chuck. So, all right. So you can see he doesn't even want to talk about it. He's probably like, uh oh, I better be very careful here. I don't even know what the heck happened. He's probably a little bit nervous too because he knows when the Republicans get back in Trump. I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't, I didn't investigate Trump. I love Trump. I'm team Trump. In fact, Chuck Schumer in 2025 is going to be team Trump. Oh no. I, I thought what they did was very shocking and very inappropriate. So he doesn't want anything to do with it. Now, Jim Jordan, also somebody in the, um, uh, you know, highly sort of active in the Republican party, very, uh, you know, effective, I'd say. Here he is responding to this as well. Here he is with uh, Laura Ingram from Fox News last night. A lot of reaction today. Uh, Republicans uh, yep. promise a lot of accountability, uh, but a lot of times we're disappointed 
Is that going to change now? Uh, all the time, Laura. Not, not sometimes. It is going like, to change, and I appreciate the leader's statement, and that's exactly what needs to happen. But even before that, this Friday, we're going back to vote on this stupid bill that the Democrats passed out of the Senate yesterday. So we will be there all day Friday. I'll be in Thursday night. Merrick Garland, Chris Ray, come to the House Judiciary Committee this Friday and answer our questions about this action today, which has never happened in American history. What was on the warrant? What were you really doing? What were you looking for? Why not talk to President Trump? and have him give the information you're after. This is unbelievable. And understand the history here. One year ago, it was the, the Merrick Garland using the Patriot Act against parents. One day ago, it was 87,000 agents in a bill the Democrats passed to go harass Americans from the IRS. And today, we have the raid of a former president's home in America. So, heck, we, we deserve answers now. And this Friday would be a good time. Jerry Nadler, call up Christopher Ray, call up Mara Garland, bring him in front of the House Judiciary Committee so we can ask him the questions that the American people deserve answers to. That's a pretty good line. I like that. You know, two years ago, two days ago, one year ago, one day ago, one month ago. I like that. Well done there. So, Jim Jordan, and I've seen some people saying, yeah, you know, Jim Jordan will actually, Hiker 7 over on Rumble says, uh, put Jordan in charge. Okay, McCarthy's going to make a bunch of noise, but he'll never make a criminal referral. Jim Jordan might be somebody who actually has some stones to do something with this. And I think I agree with that, right? I've heard McCarthy talk for years, and he's really pretty ineffective. So Jim Jordan saying that there may be a changing of the guard. We have Senator Blackburn. She's saying if the FBI can do this to Donald Trump, guess what they can do to I you? I think that there are a lot of questions that we justifiably have, and we want answers because if the FBI can do this to President Donald Trump, they can do it to you, and the American people know that. All right. Yeah, no question, and we were talking about that this morning on our uh, walk and talk. You know, is Donald Trump just sitting there, right? The former president, one of the most powerful men ever to have lived, is uh, watching FBI agents, special agents, just rummage through his crap. Just, you know, uh, what's in here? <laughs> Throwing around crap all over Mar-a-Lago like you see in the movies. And, and Trump's just sitting there, right? If that's, if that's capable with him, if you can have a corrupt FBI going after the president, wh you know, what chance do the Whitmer plotters have? What chance do the J6ers have, right? He's got an entire political network. He's got billions of dollars. He's got infrastructure to defend himself. And the U.S. government just took a giant uh, expense out of him, right, in, in, the, in the form of liberty from his uh, seizing of his property without any explanation. And they don't have to give an explanation because they run everything right now. Here's Carrie Lake, and she is saying something very interesting that we've talked a lot about. You know, the pendulum swings both ways. It goes from one direction to the other. Right now, the Democrats are in charge, but that's not going to be forever. In fact, not going to be for that much longer in general. We've got, I don't know, what is that? Five months maybe left of this, and then the Republicans will probably be in charge in the House of Representatives. So here's Carrie Lake now wondering, what happens when McCarthy makes good on his promise? What happens when Jim Jordan's in charge, and Matt Gates is in charge, and Lauren Boebert is in charge? Maybe the pendulum swings the other way. Here's Carrie Lake from Arizona, who's running for office, and hopefully she wins. Uh, I wish we were uh, talking about something else that's really sad and, and tragic, what has happened to our federal government. Yeah. Going after a, a former president, I suppose this sets a precedent. And, and I wonder if uh, people like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton should yes. be nervous yes. if, the, if uh, you know President Trump ever makes it back into the White House. Yes, very good questions there, Miss Lake. A lot of good questions. And Bo Bobert and others, Matt Gates, have already made the indication that they are going full steam ahead when the time comes. In fact, here is Lauren Bobert. You guys, I'm pissed. We oh. are a nation of law and order. And this raid by the FBI on President Trump's home is totally un American. This is Gestapo crap, and it will not stand. The Department of Injustice needs to be cleaned out if they are going to start pretending we're some sort of banana republic. This is exactly why we conservatives are opposed to the 87,000 new IRS agents Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats want to hire right after spending $700,000 on ammunition for the IRS. It was Trump today, but you're next if we don't take a stand. Remember, this is about power. Today was a complete show of force. This is about the desire of the deep state to have a total control. And President Trump is standing right in their way. They spied on Trump. They lied about Trump. And I'm calling for a select committee into this political raid of Trump. Make Preserve your, your documents and clear your calendars, Democrats. 
preserve your documents and clear your calendar. So the Republicans are going to have their own select committee and they're going to respond and they're going to investigate all of it. And you know what, my friends, they don't even have to have a full committee. It doesn't even matter. They can just pass a resolution and put however many committee members they want on there, put whatever token Democrats they want on there. It doesn't even matter. They can do whatever they want and they can subpoena everybody like Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton, and they can refer it over to their DOJ. When Donald Trump runs the DOJ, then he can prosecute them and the whole country will continue to collapse. All right. So that's that's what the Democrats have started and the Republicans have responded. We'll see if they make good on any of their threats. We'll have to continue to follow that. All right. And we've got one final segment, my friends. Donald Trump and his family have responded to the raid on their Mar-a-Lago property. We're going to go through some of this. The Epoch Times has a report for us, and you can see here that it tells us the family is reacting to the raid. And here's a photograph of the family. Uh, Everybody's sort of uh, lined up there, and I want to share here. It says Eric Trump actually responded. Donald Trump Jr., the eldest child, wrote on Twitter. He said that the Biden administration is out of control. DOJ is ripping this country apart, openly targeting their political enemies. He says, this is what you see in a third world banana republic. Eric Trump also hit the airwaves. He was on with Fox News. And so we're going to take a listen to that. Here was the the president's son, Eric. And I think he was on Fox News. Here he is. He was describing this live last night after the raid took place, about 9.14 p.m. And when we were sort of unpacking what happened during the raid, Apparently it started, you know, kind of a 4 a.m., 6 a.m. type of a thing. And they walked out with a bunch of boxes of confidential records that the National Archives wanted. We still don't know all the details about it because the search warrant has not been published. But this is Eric Trump, who's out literally right after it all concluded, explaining what happened. I was, Sean. In fact, I was the guy that got the call this morning and I called my father, let him know that it happened. So I was involved in this all day. And, you know, welcome to politics in, you know, in the, in the you know, 2000s. Um, Sean, my father never got so much as a speeding ticket in his life, you know, until he made one decision, and that's to go down the escalators of Mar-a-Lago and spend a lot of money and go and actually fight for this country for the first time. And he did a better job than anybody has ever done. And they started coming after him. The Washington Post, the day he won, 2016, the day he won, November 8th, that night they wrote an article. This is when impeachment begins. He wasn't president. He hadn't been elected for less, you know, for five minutes at that point. And they start, this is when impeachment begins. And then he's impeached the first time. And then he was impeached a second time. And they slandered him. They belittled him. You know, they went after him. They went after all of us. There's no family. We've covered most of these stories. Remember, we talked about Vissilyak and the Russian ambassador and that Donald Trump Jr. met with him in Trump Tower, covered all of that, mostly nonsense. We actually talked, we actually read the transcripts. I think that was Michael Flynn, right? Who's communicating with uh, foreign, foreign agents about a transition that was already well underway. Nothing that I saw that was illegal. They investigated it, impeached him once and again, and they lost both times. They made civil claims against him. They went after his CFO, chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, and they, they were just auditing his grandkids' tuition, right? So talk about the Trump family. They were going after his CFO's grandkids. Like everybody in the Trump world has been so under the thumb of the feds ever since day one. Letitia, tishiest of the Tishes, James, remember her? This illegitimate president, every time she talks, her TDS starts acting up and her face spasms. So you know we've, we've got a lot of efforts from these people time and time again, and they just are not able to seal the deal. They've got an entire January 6th committee that they've been shoving down our gullets for the last 18 months or so, and trying to craft the narrative there doesn't work. So this is escalatory. They're having to break glass in case of emergency here. And this is where it's going. Family in American history that has taken more arrows in the back than the Trump family every single time. And you know what? It's gone on past politics. You look at the attorney generals, you look at district attorneys all over the country. All they want to do is they want to get Donald Trump. They raise money on it. They send fundraising emails about it. They brag on camera about it. They go after him. They subpoena him. I'm probably the most subpoenaed person in the history of the United States. Every single day we get another (laughs) subpoena. And they do it for one reason. Oh, that's so painful. I shouldn't be laughing at that, right? It's death by lawyers. And this is something that we've talked a lot about. I've made a lot of complaints about Democracy Docket and Mark Elias and the people who run the National Labor's Union Board. All of these agencies got together. They 
created a team to win an election. And they've been doing it ever since. And they've been using the law in their favor. They sent Michael Sussman over to harass the FBI, publish the story and investigate this and all this stuff. Same thing happened with the Whitmer plotters, right? They created a whole fake narrative. Listen, because they don't want Donald Trump to run and win again in 2024. And Sean, that's what this is about today. To have 30 FBI agents, actually more than that, descend 30. on Mar-a-Lago, give absolutely, you know, no notice, go through the gate, start ransacking an office, ransacking a closet. You know, they broke into a safe. He didn't even have anything in the safe. I mean... Give me a break. And, and this is coming from what? The National Archives? Yet, you know, Hunter Biden, he's a firearms crimes, uh, prostitution, illegal drugs, um, you know, shady deals with everybody around the world. And by the way, it's all on his laptop for the whole world to see. In his own writing, in his own words, cooperated by everybody. Where, where are these FBI agents? Where, where is everybody? Why is it that the arrows only fly at Donald Trump and his family? Why is it that the political persecution only goes one way in this country. Great question, Eric Trump. And I think a lot of people are going to be asking themselves that. Wondering if this is the beginning of the end, you know, is this sort of the first domino? Is this the weaponization of the DOJ to uh, an irredeemable degree? Is the FBI so broken that there's no redeeming it at all? Well, Donald Trump seems to think so. He posted this. He says there is a nation in decline. He's talking about us. That's the United States. It's about a four minute ad that he, he published. And so let's listen into some of this. And then we're going to get into your questions and your comments. And so get those fingers ready on the keyboard so that we can get to those and your super chats and our new members, Herman, in a minute. Here is Donald Trump. We are a nation in decline. We are a failing nation. We are a nation that has the highest inflation in over 40 years, where the stock market just finished the worst first half of a year in more than five decades. We are a nation that has the highest energy cost in its history, and we are no longer energy independent or energy dominant, which we were just two short years ago. We are a nation that is begging Venezuela and Saudi Arabia for oil. We are a nation that surrendered in Afghanistan leaving behind dead soldiers, American citizens, and $85 billion worth of the finest military equipment in the world. We are a nation that allowed Russia to devastate a country, Ukraine, killing hundreds of thousands of people, and it will only get worse. We are a nation that has weaponized its law enforcement against the opposing political party like never before. We've never seen anything like this. We are a nation that no longer has a free and fair press. Fake news is about all you get. We are a nation where free speech is no longer allowed, where crime is rampant like never before, where the economy has been collapsing, where more people died of COVID in 2021 than in 2020. We are a nation that is allowing Iran to build a massive nuclear weapon and China to use the trillions and trillions of dollars it's taken from the United States to build a military to rival our own. We are a nation that over the past two years is no longer respected or listened to all around the world. And we are a nation that is hostile to liberty and freedom and faith. We are a nation whose economy is floundering, whose stores are not stocked whose deliveries are not coming and whose educational system is ranked at the bottom of every list. We are a nation that in many ways has become a joke. But soon we will have greatness again. It was hardworking patriots like you who built this country, and it is hardworking patriots like you who are going to save our country. There is no mountain we cannot climb. There is no summit we cannot reach. 
There is no challenge we cannot beat. There is no victory we cannot have. We will not bend. We will not break. We will not yield ever, ever, ever. We will never give in. We will never give up. And we will never, ever back down. We will never let you down. As long as we are confident and you know, the tyrants we are fighting do not stand even a little chance. Because we are Americans, and Americans kneel to God and God alone. And it is time to start talking about greatness for our country again. The best is yet to come, President Donald J. Trump. So I know there are a lot of people who are watching this garbage happening around the country and having a lot of despair and anxiety and difficulty, but hang on, right? I think there's a lot more coming down the pike and there will be a response to this. Sometimes things have to get a little bit darker before the dawn. We might be there, but that doesn't mean that times are over. And so let's jump into your thoughts, your questions, and your comments now. We had several of them come in on YouTube, so let's start a couple of those here. Sweetums from Beth Coddington, we got that one. General Kale says, hey, the GOP is two-faced. They'll talk tough, use it to fund and raise establishment candidates, and then go back to beating the Washington generals, playing the Globetrotters, getting dunked on by Democrats for show. I don't disagree with that. You know, I'm sort of jaded with the Republicans general, uh, general. They have made a lot of promises my whole life. And every time they get in charge, they don't really do much about it. So I think that you're, you're, you're right on this, but this might be a Trump, a, a Trump revitalized GOP, right? I mean, look what happened in Arizona, Blake Masters, Mark Fincham, Carrie Lake, all of them won, and they're going to reshape Arizona if they win the general election, which I presume that they will. So there's a lot, I think, that is going to, to come from this new dynamic, but we'll have to wait and see. Beth Coddington was here, says, I just checked Brave searching for the judge. No restrictions there. And so it sounds like Judge Reinhardt was showing up in some of those search results. Thanks for that, Beth. And, that, and then Vienticus actually got us the, the archive. So, you know, Brave might show you the same page, but it's still going to be privated, his bio. So you're going to want to go to the archive if you want to see what happened there. Elaine Smith says, did they find anything at Trump's place or did they just plant evidence? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I don't think that they have found anything that they've communicated to us, right? They're just walking out with boxes, but there's going to be a lot of, I think, a, a battle about was Trump entitled to have those documents? Did he declassify them, right? If he has any legitimate basis, any basis to claim to have those documents, right? This was all about returning doc. They could have they could have filed a civil lawsuit against him. They could have gotten an order from a judge. There's many other things they could do to get documents without having to do a raid. Thank you, Elaine. We had another one from The Real Bamboonga says, the judge looks like Bill Maher had a worse looking brother. Let's go back and do a comparison on that. It, does he? Let's see here. Uh, here is the judge, Bill Maher. Bill Maher. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I can see it. I can definitely see it. And now that I take a closer look at it, yeah. Yeah, Bill Maher, didn't he just come out and have a rant against uh, obesity or something like that? Yeah, he's, he's, I think he's turning into a conservative. It's weird what's going on over there. Thank you, The Real Bambooga. James Clark is here, says, been a while for me. Your in-depth to issues is fantastic. Well, welcome back, James Clark. Thanks for the super chat. Very generous one. I'm glad that you are here. Your in-depth on the issues is fantastic. I appreciate it. We have a lot of fun here. And somebody over on our locals and rumble chat said that, you know, they canceled cable because we can hit a lot of the highlights here. And that's a huge compliment. You know, I feel I feel um, I'm, I'm appreciative that we're able to really sink in on some of these issues. It's a lot of fun. All right. So let's go over to locals while we've got C. Rose in the house. He says, hey, Rob, I'm just outraged. Oh, God, this is a T1 comment. He says T1 is clearly better than T2. He's talking about Terminator. He's talking. He's so oh gosh. Ugh. All right. Let me try to contain my rage. Pepsi is better than Coke. Trump is clearly a president, better president than Joe Biden. All right. So right now you're one for three. However, pineapple on pizza is patently better than without. Okay. One for four. C Rose is uh, one for four. Uh, he's getting close to a bannable offense. Typically, you know, if you go zero for five, maybe it's bannable, but we'll leave you around here for now. 
Vientikis says, take that back about pineapples on pizza or I will call for a civil war. Yeah, so Vientikis is no pineapple on pizza, uh, which is obviously offensive. I mean, it's like, you know, <laughs> it's like, what? Pineapple on your pizza? What kind of person are you? You have to ask yourself that in the mornings. Wake up and say, what has happened to me? What, what have I become? Uh, and so hopefully there's some serious introspection going on over there with C. Rose. Former LEO says, WTF, how can a search warrant and the return remain sealed after they've been served and executed? <laughs> because the judge doesn't want you to see it. The warrant and the return should have been left at the location of the warrant service. I'm sure Trump has a copy, but uh, you know, he, he, why, why should he publish it? Uh, doesn't he deserve the presumption of innocence? I'm sure he has it. I can only speak to the California procedures in the DOJ and the Trump amendment that specifically deletes due process. <laughs> there, that is unless they're making it up as they go along. Yeah, you have to forget. You can't forget about the Trump clause, right? That's a very special privilege that says uh, the rules are whatever the Democrats say they are. R.S. Bram says Trump didn't appoint him. It's my understanding the magistrate judges in South Florida are appointed by a vote, not by POTUS. POTUS appoints the one above it. Reinhardt got an agent, got hired as an agent of the district court, which does not have the same full authority from my understanding. So, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it is a magistrate case. Yeah. So that that might make sense. Yeah. Sergeant Bob says, I sent you an email a little while ago about Mark Armstrong on the judge. It should be there now. All right. I'll take a look at that. Sergeant Bob says maybe next time he's up, McConnell will be primaried out potentially. Potentially. I'm not sure. Uh, here, Vientikis says, here's Mitch McConnell in the house. Turtle cocaine Mitch. Thank you, V. <laughs> and so Sergeant Bob sent me an email as well. I'll take a look at that after the show, Sergeant. Let's see what else we've got. Coming in from you. Candy Gas is on the pineapple train over on Rumble, which is just, you know, what have we done? Sergeant Bob says, for everyone's info, if the search warrant says search for $1 for a $1 gold piece, then searchers can look anywhere for a $1 gold piece might be where it might be. Essentially anywhere, right? Anywhere. So Sergeant Bob obviously is a former sergeant. Uh, he's retired and, uh, you know, has a lot of expertise in this space. He wrote a book about it, but he... He's communicating that they'll just say, well, just go look anywhere you want. They'll say, go look for this. And that gives you free access to the entire property. NY Renal MD says, assuming there is any possibility of illegality on Trump's part, given his prior wiretapping and investigation during 2016, why wouldn't Garland appoint a special prosecutor so there is no conflict? Well, they did. They appointed Robert Mueller and they've got the entire January 6th council that's sort of acting like that. But it's not right. As a judge, just the appearance of conflict is enough. Garland was passed over the Supreme Court by Trump, so he's very bitter and angry about it. Absent a special prosecutor, we must assume the fix is in, especially with prior acts of fake FISA warrants. The USA looks very bad investigating political enemies. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It, it's a very, very bad look. Three girlies is in the house and shout out to the youngest girly says conspiracy theory. Judge B Bruce Reinhardt was promised a Supreme Court seat to sign off on the warrant. Stranger things have happened. I like where you're going with that. Three girlies. He did go. Where did he go to school? He went to Pennsylvania law schools. He's not Harvard or Yale. So that kind of takes him out of the running on the, most of those. I mean, uh, a, uh, ACB went to Notre Dame. But there's nobody from Pennsylvania. They're too stupid. It's only Harvard and Yale and the Ivy Leagues. Is Pennsylvania Ivy League? I think they are, right? Uh, maybe he can qualify. I don't know. Thunder 7 says, great coverage as always, Rob. Appears the judge has always been part of the swamp for the entire career. A, the, this warren is a culmination of his deep corruption and loyalty to Clinton and Biden. During his decade representing clients, Reinhardt was named uh, in a Crime Victims' Right Act lawsuit 2011. He was accused of violating DOJ policy, switch sides, potentially leveraging insider information about Epstein's case in order to curry favor. And that is a sourced over there from the Daily Caller. So, wow, interesting. Thank you for that detail, Thunder 7. Sergeant Bob says, notice that KJP lacks eye contact. She reads the prescribed drivel. I wonder if the DOJ went to Russia for training with the KJB. KGB. I don't know, Sergeant Bob, but yeah, she seems very uncomfortable up there. Three girlies is here, says, so when Joe Biden finally gets out of office, this must be set up precedent for them to raid his Delaware beach house when they come down with indictments on his son. Right. Three girlies is right. And it's. Are they going to do that? I mean, I guess they should. I guess they have to do it. T 
TOS Forever says, Tantamount Tuesday to you, Rob, Marvin, the mods, and the Watching the Watchers community. Shout out to TOS Forever. Hand of Nod is here. He says, good evening. Supposedly, culture is upstream of politics. Can you see a clean boundary between the culture war and general politics? Or is it a hot pile of mud? Signal to, loy to noise. The lawfare is now elevated to higher rules of engagement. First excuse available and Trump will be indicted. I agree with that. The fight over the nation's steering wheel is going to worsen. Traditional rhinos are outclassed. There will be first America first types who may express the will to govern it. Maintain vigilance. I agree with that hand of nod. Very good comment. And I think that's true. I think the American first types, you know, not the milk toast Mitch McConnell's. I'm here to talk about the flood. What, what flood are you talking about? What are you going to do? Spend more money to change the weather like, like Mark Kelly from Arizona tweeted? You people are nuts, right? It's about results. And the old guard Republicans haven't been able to deliver any of them. Thank you, Hand of Nod. Former LEO says, the ideal situation if the Republicans become a majority party in the Senate is to reduce the budgets of the FBI and the DOJ, the White House staff and any other budgets by two thirds and let them chew on that. I don't disagree. Thunder seven says the only way that I've been able to contain my anger is to know that the majority of the country feels exactly like I do. This unprecedented attack on Trump is going to red pill even more moderate Dems who are finally understanding what we've been saying for four or five years. They are coming him to get to you. The rhinos, the Marxist Dems thinks it's a joke, but the Patriots have come cl as close to removing the tyrants as ever. We are on the precipice for sure. And we talked about that on the morning walk and talk Thunder seven. You know, Megan McCain said that this may have been handing Trump this election on a silver platter. Ben Shapiro, who I thought was kind of a never Trumper for at least a, a while, right? At least in the primaries, <clears throat> he, he sort of came out. He said, this is a huge problem, right? So all of these people who are kind of like the moderates of the Republicans are all, all crying foul and rightfully so. Wild Child says, do we know if DeSantis knew about the raid in advance? I did not know about that, but I did see he published a statement where he was, uh, you know, speaking out against it, but not, I didn't glean any knowledge about whether he knew anything about it. Echo House says, Republicans continue to allow so many atrocities, they'll do nothing to defend themselves. They won't lash out. They are too afraid of the law. Checkmate. Yeah, uh, well, I'm not sure that it's checkmate, but the Republicans are pretty milquetoast for sure. Former LEO says, Schumer is trying to avoid taking a giant bite from that turd burger and the Republicans are going to serve it up. Hunter's crack dealer is here. He says, let's get say Trump gets reelected, which I still believe he is the current president, according to Hunter's crack dealer, and he knows. And there is a red wave. What can be done to disband or at least to revamp or restrict the power of the FBI and any other institution that is overstepping their bounds? And if it was disbanded, how to stop another agency from doing the same? Asking for a crack addicted client who wants to know. Yeah, that's Hunter's crack dealer is here. And yeah, it's a good question, Hunter's crack dealer. It is, I think, w perfectly within the purview, sort of what former LEO said, right? Congress has the power of the purse, and so they can just not fund things. Yeah, and for courts like the D.C. Circuit Court and, let's say, the Ninth Circuit Court, although that's sort of changing, you know, they're, they could also adjust the jurisdiction of the federal court. So they could just say there is no D.C. Circuit Court anymore. I think they could do that. Sergeant Bob says, this is all proven the swamp is much deeper than Trump even realized. It needs to be pumped clear of the corruption. Vientikis says, not that I want to participate in the fake divide, but I really would just like to force the DNC to pay for all this frivolous legal stuff. If for nothing than to prevent any political organization from ever again using governmental powers as a weapon. C. Reed says, hey, Rob, longtime listener, love the show. I'm just curious why the IRS pencil pushers needed 700,000 bucks in guns and ammo. So I think it was, was it, I think it was more than that, right? That's, that's like chump change for them. 700,000, it's like tip money. My thought is it's going to take a lot more than that to take ours. Yeah, to take, <laughs> yeah, they're going to need a lot more than $700,000 worth of ammo if, if they want to be successful here. The antique says, yeah. Did, did Trump say Iran is building nuclear weapons? Oh, brother, that old hackneyed line says here, Iran is building nuclear weapons. That's a scene from the fifth element where he says, Aziz Light! One of the best movies of all time, in fact, Bruce Willis. Outstanding. Thank you, Vienti Kiss. All right. And let's see what else we have over on Locals. TOS says, the FBI, Secret Service, NIH, United Nations, 
they're all going to be t- taken care of. They're performing violence against the American people from TOS. Sergeant Bob says everything is well put by President Trump. He's always been correct and he tells it like it is. He predicted high fuel prices, inflation, out of control spending, declining retirement accounts, more taxes and a bad stock market. He certainly did. He certainly did, Sergeant Bob. Thank you for your comment. We had another one over on YouTube that came in from NY Renal MD. He says, as a court of appeals judge, did Merrick Garland unlearn everything about recusal? He was passed over by Donald Trump, clearly requiring recusal. Yeah, well, the whole thing is a conflict of interest, right? The entire investigation is emanating from the DOJ. They are trying to take out a political enemy. So yeah, how do you, how do you create it so it feels like it's not a conflict? Well, you appoint special prosecutors or you impeach him or you create a committee. They've done it all. They've tried everything. They're out of options. They are panicking. They're, they're breaking glass in case of emergency. They are raiding his property. The next thing that's going to probably come up is an indictment because they know that it's not being effective. They're not able to sideline him to their pleasure. Jason says, truth is Trump could have declassified them in his mind and his intent is enough authority to declassify them regardless of their claims. It's a good argument there, Jason, right? Talk about mens rea, some of that. Three Girlie says, the judge looks like Bill Maher got crap stuck on the bottom of a shoe and he sniffed it. Oh gosh, I shouldn't have read that one. What if the judge hears that, Three Girlies? I'm in big trouble. Not really. He's in Florida. But the point is, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know if he looks like Bill Maher or not. I think he does. I think you're right about that. John McGarvey says, Trump printed out the Hunter hard drive and replaced his name with Hunter's. <laughs> So that's why they went after him. Miss Lucky says that Miss Lucky has pineapple on her half. I will not touch it. Oh my goodness. We have, we have a division amongst a couple. Is that, is that a thing? I stick to with my Chicago style Italian sausage and green pepper on my half. (laughs) Never the twain shall meet. (laughs) So Miss Lucky has a pizza with pineapple. We still love Miss Lucky. I mean, she can have her pizza with pineapple. I guess we'll still, you know, we'll allow, we'll allow it for the time being. We'll see how bad things get here. If things get really bad, you know, Sergeant Bob and Miss Lucky, I don't know, you know, you guys have a complicated pizza order. So you call them and you say, listen, I want pizza, a pineapple on one half. And I want Chicago. Is the, uh, does she like the Chicago style? Uh, It's just complicated business, (laughs) but it's true love, man. Love conquers all love will conquer even pizza which is a very beautiful message from sergeant bob and miss lucky what a beautiful thing today in spite of all the fbi raids we still have love in the air uh togo the white says robert barnes's theory is the deep state made this move themselves without biden's knowledge they were afraid of what documents trump had that could harm them i don't know yeah maybe i mean i don't know that sounds like I I have a hard time believing that they would do something outside of the the purview of the White House. Like, are they, is the White House that much of just a a symbol, like symbolic? It really doesn't do anything. (laughs) Maybe, maybe it's worse than I even thought. That's from Robert Barnes. So shout out to Robert Barnes. And you know, they're right next door to us on locals at vivabarneslaw.locals.com, right next to watching the watchers.locals.com. So come check us out. Uh, NY Renal MD says not only was Hillary not charged, she was on Twitter today fundraising off this whole thing, selling hats saying, but her emails. That's bold. She did the same thing essentially, right? We don't even know what they're alleging Trump did. (laughs) But I'm guessing if it follows the same pattern as all of the other inquiries, there's probably not much there. So, all right, that's from NY Renal MD. Hillary Clinton, what, what a thing. She better get comfy. She better raise a lot of profits, better sell a lot of those hats because the Republicans are going to be in charge soon. Ronnie Cole says, I have news for you, Robert. This administration is very incompetent and pathological liars. I, I, I mean, I think I might've known. I, I had an inkling on that one, Ronnie Cole. I had an inkling on that one, but it is, uh, it is shocking sort of how, I guess, far it might go. But if they really didn't know that any of this was underfoot, underway, you are right, Ronnie. Very, very incompetent. I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to explain that. It's sort of, you're the president, right? You're supposed to run that entire branch. It's a big job. Very important job. 
indicting an ex-president is sort of within the purview of those authorities. You kind of want to see what's going on over there. Thank you, Ronnie. Sean Brem is here. He says, what about Biden and Ukraine? Double standard DOJ. Uh, yeah, yeah, Biden, Biden and Hunter and all of the, 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 the confidentiality problems, all of the conflicts of interest. Why don't they raid his house? MR says, swear jar again. I'm fired up. Vote him out today. Well, thank you, MR. Yeah, we try to keep, you know, we try to keep the profanity to a minimum. It is a, um, it's a family show where we talk about the death of America. It's a family affair. We all have to get everybody around here. So we try to keep the profanity to a minimum. But thank you, MR, for, I, I know some days, you know, it's just kind of hard to, to contain yourself. But thank you for contributing to the swear jar. Herman Kelly became a member. And so thank you, Herman Kelly, for joining up to become a member I know that we've had uh, several of several members. Maybe Sunshine just became a member, has been a member for seven months and says, wow, seven months. Maybe Sunshine. That's so awesome of you. Thank you for being a member for so long. It says, hope the raid didn't plant spyware. Check for bugs. I'm sure they are. They probably have their entire security, you know, uh, sort of a third party independent contractor security teams going through the entire facility right now, which is a good thing. And shout out to our members. Members get those morning walk and talks when I publish them, which is pretty regularly. So uh, almost every day. Thank you to our members. We also had Breakdance Express here saying the administration is nothing but a front for the most corrupt trash imaginable. Will they be able to deal with their genie when it turns on them? I think that, again, it, it's sort of it's the break glass in case of emergency. They are doing everything they can to prevent that from happening. It's really their only play left. They know if Trump wins, they're in deep, deep doo-doo. So they've got to do what they can to prevent that from happening. Francisco Gonzalez is here, says, what can happen legally to the FBI or judges who signed if nothing is found? Is there anything that can happen or has happened before? It's a gr good question. Not much, right? Judges sign warrants all the time. And if there's nothing found, well, that's okay. They thought there was enough probable cause. And of course, they're just listening to the officers who are swearing things under oath. So the judge is kind of removed from a lot of this, right? If a warrant is facially problematic, it typically goes back. You know, why, why is it facial? The judge isn't going to independently investigate the merits of a warrant, right? If they come and they say, I've got probable cause to uh, draw this person's blood in a DUI case. The judge doesn't say, well, let me go run my own analysis and let me talk to him and see. The judge says, what did you say, officer? And they look at it for two seconds. They look at the warrant. They say, uh, DUI signed. Here you go. And if that person's blood comes back with zero zeros, right? No alcohol in there. Judge isn't responsible for that. Judge doesn't care. In fact, the police don't even care. Prosecutors don't even care. Who, who, who has, it gets left with the bag? The defendant, the citizen, the person. So the same thing will happen here with, you know, Trump, right? He's got to hire a team and he's got to respond to all of this stuff. FBI, very little repercussions. What are you going to charge him with a crime? Out of the DC circuit? What's going to happen to them? Nothing. Nothing. We had another one from Jeff Pearson. He says, who is Brian J. Outen? Most overlooked FBI employee, professed Christian and conservative. He's a weak spot in the deep state armor. I don't know who that is. I actually don't have any idea who that is. Let me see if I can see it. Brian J. He looks like he's an author of some variety, FBI man at heart of surveillance abuses. Oh, here's a real clear investigation. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, this came over from 2020, unnamed FBI supervisory agent uh, cited by DOJ watchdog. Brian Otten has taught the course at Patrick Henry College, 11 month, 2016, counterintelligence team. All right, so I'll save that up there. Thank you for that super chat. That came in from Francis. No, that came in from Jeff Pearson. I don't know much about the guy, but I obviously have it pulled up. So I will take a look at that. Thank you, Jeff, for sending that in. Beth Coddington had another one says, I don't buy the incompetence argument. This is decades of planning. Who knows how many rhinos have been blackmailed or bribed? It's just demonic, bro. I agree with you, Beth. I agree. It is, it is, it is, I think more than just incompetence, right? They've got, I think, contingency plans. And we learned a lot about that. Remember that time article that came out that said how we did it kind of a thing. It was like the OJ thing. It was like how we did it, how we, how we, you know, won. They, they're planning this stuff out. They're not dummies, right? Joe Biden may be 
incompetent and a bumbling, you know, individual. But that doesn't mean the people behind him are, right? And I think it would be a mistake to conflate the two. We had a couple more on YouTube. Tony Neves says Judge Reinhardt's profile is up on the Florida bar. Oh, yeah, that's another good place to check. The Florida State bar would be another place. Probably not as much there as you would see on his court bio, but thank you for that heads up, Tony. I appreciate it. Claiborne here with the super chat. No questions. Thank you to Claiborne, though. Shout out to Clay. We had Marine serving Jesus Christ is here. He says, Illuminati card. Enough is enough. Pull out that Illuminati card, call him on it. Boom. And uh, there he is, Marine serving Jesus Christ. We're going back over to locals. Let's see. We're going to do a refresh on this screen. And then we'll see what else we have here. Couple comments. All right. So Miguel Labra is here, says the swamp is draining. The swamp creatures are exposing themselves, which is a, an optimistic way to think about this. It's like, you know, these people exist in the government. Now they're just identifying how they think, how they operate. And we're all getting to see it on full display. Zach Nichols is here. He says, being a public figure in my community has brought people from all over the world into my messages. Even in the darkest days, the world views the USA as the glue that holds it all together. But we do need to get our stuff together in Arizona. Heather says, didn't you say the judge went to school at Princeton? Oh, he did. Uh, yeah, look, I probably three girlies. I can't remember what I said, you know, two minutes ago, most of the time. So Princeton, yeah, he's pretty smart. Sounds like it's SCOTUS material to me. Miss Lucky says, yeah, we established the pizza protocol when we order. Glad to give a laugh amongst serious stuff, <laughs> which is true. It's true. It's a great, you know, it's, it's peace and harmony. The pineapplers with the non-pineapplers coming together in Chino Valley, Arizona. It's a beautiful thing. Three girlies is here. Oh my, what? Okay, look at this. Holy moly. Okay, so Heather says, youngest girlie is here with her best friend for the week. They went to Pennsylvania. Here is a good picture to share. Is that a bear? I'm pretty sure that's a bear. <laughs> I think that's a bear, three girlies. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. So that's the youngest girlie. Shout out to the youngest girlie hanging out with a black bear outside. How amazing is that? You know, when I was in Jackson Hole, I saw a bear. I saw two bears. I think they were, I mean, they must have been black bears. They didn't look that black. They were sort of brown, but they were little cubs. And they were about 25 yards away from me. And uh, it was amazing to watch them. They just sort of popped up. I think they were eating huckleberries or something. And then they just dipped back into the bushes. And I think I shared that, that video on uh, Locals. So three girlies, you may have seen that, which is why you're referencing this one. But whoa, that is close. And that the youngest girly, very brave, standing there with a the little bear just right, right across the yard. Best friends. It's like. This whole show is like a Disney movie. We have pineapple love. We have, uh, you know, furry little animals out there roaming the countryside. What a beautiful show this was. Makes up for the show yesterday, which is good. We needed that. <laughs> All right. And so I think that is it for us, my friends. We had a couple, uh, one final refresh here. Oh my goodness. What is this thing? Okay. So, wow. Okay. So Phantasmagoria. This is brand new. Holy moly. Okay, so Locals locals just launched Super Chats. And I got an email about that today, but I haven't read it yet. And apparently Phantasmagoria is already using it. I don't even know how to use it. And so shout out to our Super Chat from Phantasmagoria just saying thank you, which is our, that is our very first Locals Super Chat from Phantasmagoria. What an, what an honorary thing. Thank you for that, Phantasmagoria. <laughs> it works. Sousen Academy says, still want to know about Pelosi. What about Pelosi and her son, Paul Jr. in Taiwan? Yeah, a lot of questions about that one. The Chinese are responding to that. Uh, you know, it sort of looks like they're preparing for an invasion. It, it sort of feels like uh, season two of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. You kind of like, you know, those Netflix series, like they change the whole cast on season two. Same thing. We had the Russian uh, preparing invasion and they said, we're going to stop Putin and nothing happened. He invaded. Same thing I think is happening uh, over there in China, unfortunately. Wild Child said, my chicken was glued to the stream tonight. 
well, that, it's like I, I think you mean like a chicken, right? Like an actual chicken was watching with us, hanging out with us. Shout out to the chicken in the house. And that, my friends, is it for us for the day. That's all the comments over on Locals and all of those amazing super chats from our friends on YouTube. And shout out to our Rumble. Uh, oh, my goodness. And we had Savvy Sue sent a two. Now I'm going to have to figure out how to integrate. Look at this. This is how it looks on Locals. This is, this is brand new. I had not seen this before. It looks like Super Chats. Look, here, this is how cool. Tip coins. Whoa, how cool. All right, so I've got a, now I've got uh, a whole other uh, set of Super Chat type of things to integrate. I love it. It's great. <laughs> Thank you for, very cool. Okay, so uh, by the way, so Locals is doing some cool stuff, okay? I had a meeting with the, the development team over there about two weeks ago. And they said, don't tell anybody anything about what we're working on. And I said, ugh, but I want to. Can I tell a little bit? And they said, don't you do it. And I said, all right, I won't tell anybody. So uh, it's, yeah, so Vienti Kiss. So yeah, so we've got the Rumble Rants. We've got the local Super Chat. It's very cool. So a lot of ways to support the show. I'm very grateful for it. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're I'm, I'm trying to increase our production quality here. And I appreciate all the support. That's where all of this is going. So. Uh, that, my friends, is it for us for the day. We are going to wrap it up right there. I want to thank everybody for being a part of the program. Final reminder how to connect with us. If you do want to be a part of the show, the web address is over at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. You see it right there. Thank you for subscribing. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, really appreciate that. Doing our best to, uh, you know, to, to sort of grow the channel. And you can join if you want our morning walk and talks or any of the additional content. I also post them over on YouTube as well. I am a lawyer. We have an amazing law firm called the r, r Law Group. We're located in Scottsdale, Arizona. We have a mission to help good people charged with crimes find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases and beyond that in their lives. We've got a lot of cool stuff happening there. I'm going to be in there tomorrow uh, at the office with the team. We've got the whole legal team coming together for a lunch, and we're doing a sort of a lunch and learn to uh, talk about some new systems that we're unveiling uh, so that we can deliver even more safety and more clarity and more hope for our clients and their families. And so thank you for referring business over to us. 480-787-0394. It keeps us busy. It keeps us focused on our mission and we're very grateful for it. I saw another super chat come in from Rhapsody Dax. He says, even the Biden administration knew about the raid and they're using the FBI to prosecute political opponents or the FBI is rogue. Either way, the FBI needs to be dismantled. Very good comment from Rhapsody. I mean, you know, a lot of what we've talked about has been uh, FBI's creating the situations that they are investigating. And they have failed basically every step of the way. They have caused a lot of problems. You know, we still don't know, for example, who the J6er is who planted, you know, or the FBI agent is who planted the, the pipe bomb there. John McGarvey sent a tip on local, says just checking. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Okay. Yeah, so this stuff is rolling out all over the place. And so Rhapsody Dax, yeah, FBI, they have become a, a highly partisan political institution and they definitely need to, you know, that needs to be addressed, certainly. We'll see if the Republicans do it. Thank you to the mods who modded down the fort for us. Shout out to Vienticus Prime. K Bean in the house. I saw Lean is here along with playing hooky was popping in and out, I believe. And I appreciate everybody and all your support to uh, keep the chat nice and, you know, nice and productive. I appreciate it, everybody. Thank you. And shout out to our Spotlight supporter members. Go check out John over at qsimple.com. He's got a, a great website over there. Hey, Lean. Lean says, hi, Rob. Hi, Lean. Chris Romero. Shout out to Chris Romero, David B3, and Dr. EMB, who are Spotlight supporters on the show. Very grateful to them. But that, my friends, is it for us for the day. We're going to wrap it up right there. We're going to be back tomorrow to do it all again. Don't forget to join as a member if you want to see tomorrow's morning walk and talk and other good stuff. Thank you for being here and a part of the show. And I want to wish you a very tremendous evening, a beautiful, restful sleep ahead. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Have a great night, my friends. Bye-bye.